Wow. Just wow. What is going on, everyone? And welcome back to the Mets Weekly Podcast. We are live at this very moment on YouTube and on X for our post-game coverage of the Mets versus Brewers Game 3 of the National League Wild Card Series. Now, before we get into all the details, all the excitement, all the craziness that just happened in Milwaukee, I have to remind everyone to subscribe to the Mets Weekly channel if you have not already for live recordings of the Mets Weekly podcast following postseason games. For those of you watching live or on playback and you want to join the conversation in the future, make sure to to turn on those post notifications to know when we go live. For those of you in the live chat right now, want to let you guys know we love reading your comments, your questions, your concerns, all of your thoughts about this team at the current moment. But if you feel like you're being ignored, you're not being ignored. You're just being starred throughout the show. We'll try to pull up as many as we can to keep the flow of the conversation going. Now, also remember to follow Mets Weekly on X and on TikTok where we just wrapped up uh, Frank's post-game thoughts after every single Mets regular season game, as we are in the postseason now, and it was titled the Mets Frankly Postgame. For our audio listeners, make sure to follow us on your favorite listening platforms. Don't miss the audio version of new episodes that drop at 9 a.m. the following day that these are recorded live. And for those of you tuning in on the audio show right now in the future, make sure to tune into our pregame shows around 90 minutes before the game which there will be more thanks to a huge win tonight. And that will only be on our YouTube channel as the audio will just include our podcast for the post game. So without further ado, let's get into our post game show. Wow. I mean, what else can you say? You cannot write a script better than that. The Mets were down with their backs against the wall against a incredible pitcher tonight. And they somehow just pulled it out of their ass. Somehow this team, no matter what, they just have drama in their bones. I don't know how it happens, but they did it. I'm going to go right to my co-hosts, my partners in crime. How are you guys feeling? I'll go to you, Andrew. I mean, just this team. What? What? What is happening right now? This is crazy. Well, I keep making the meme. I've said it throughout the last couple of weeks when I've been on the show. Is this World Series DVD is going to hit like crack? Well, here's a new chapter of that video and, and of that DVD and how this game started was scary to how identical this game was to game three against the San Diego Padres in that series, except this time they got two hits for Francisco Lindor, but identical to what that was. And the more infuriating part throughout the beginning of that game is we're getting carved up by a guy just throwing fastballs right down the middle and sliders, but oh, it's moving and all this shit. Jose Budo comes in and just, yeah, I turned it. I mean, I'm not feeling the greatest and I'm feeling a lot better now, but physically I'm not feeling the greatest. I turned the game. I turned it off for two seconds, went and got some medicine, came back and just, isn't it poetic? The guy who we've shit on, I've shit on for three years. I've said, this dude's got no dog in him. There's nothing he does. And I went, and I, when he came up, of course, in my head, he's like, okay, here comes a 6 4 3 double play. I'm like, I know it's happening. Like, it, it, it's going to be here's your weak ass first pitch swinging, ground ball to Adamas and turns it. And is it bad when that ball's in the air? I thought Frelick was going to catch it. And until it hit the damn fan, you yeah, heard. I didn't, I didn't trust Alonzo's reaction. No. I know he's I, always I, doing stupid shit. So I was like, no, let exactly. that thing leave first leave and then first. I'll get excited. And again, and how Frelick was like, uh, uh, and then he hit that wall and that ball went over. A sick noise. I don't think I'll ever make that noise again. But the fact that it was the guy whose ass has been lit on fire, rightfully so, yeah. he finally gets his moment. And then they also tack on another run. So it's not like, well, one run ball game. You know, let's have some fun. And of course, our Sandy Koufax comes and cleans it up and ends it up. Lindor, amazing double play. 
and let's bring on those fuckers from Philly, and we go whoop their ass. Let's fucking go. Well, Frank, I'll go right to you in our pregame show because you were in attendance for it. This guy, Andrew, didn't even bother to show up. But when we talked about it, um, I said that if there was going to be a big moment, it had to come from Pete Alonso because there was definitely a lack of power um, through, let's say, 26 in it, the 20, first 26 innings uh, from the Mets. You had even power coming from a Brewers team that even if it's not like really their specialty. Um, but, I mean, they got it done. And um, it was all on the back of the big guy who uh, we have given fair criticism for. Um, and he's made, he made us look like absolute idiots and we cannot be happier. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, it's crazy. I'll tell you what, he made up for falling on his face on the double play. I mean, that, that is <laughs> one way to do it, uh, in dramatic fashion. And he almost had another big blunder with that. Uh, when Edwin Diaz was pitching the foul ball on the pop-up, they then goes right in his glove and falls out. And I was like, if that turns into more runs, oh my goodness, we're in big trouble. But Diaz gets out of it, and it just felt so fitting that it was going to come down to him. Whether he won the game or lost the game, it just felt fitting that it was going to come down to him. That like, it, it, it just felt so fitting. Like, you couldn't write a better script. I mean, because... Like we talked about, we talked about like Budo. I remember some people were saying like, why didn't Budo pitch yesterday? Like he should have been in there. Why did we go to mate time or whatever? And then Budo, he's not used to this. So they bring him in. He gives up the homers and it was just ugly back to back to start it off. And you're like, oh my gosh, here we go. And then the Brewers go to Freddie Peralta in the eighth inning. I did not have that no. on the pregame show bingo card or what have you. I mean, game one starter two days later. I mean, I know he didn't pitch a lot, but so the fact that Peralta came to the thing, I was surprised by that. And when you see him, you're like, oh gosh, here we go. And then, like I said yesterday, when you saw Devin Williams as you're falling behind, you're like, oh no, how are we going to do this? So for Pete Alonso to finally get the big, the biggest hit you could possibly get against Devin Williams. I think he's like the first hitter to take him opposite field. It's the first legit right field home run Pete Alonso's hit all year. He hit like four others to right center. This is the first time he went strictly to right field. He went with an outside pitch. He didn't try to pull it to the left side as a ground ball. Disgusting. This time he actually went with it. And I find it so interesting that it was not Eric Chavez that Pete Alonso talked to during the mound visit that Devin Williams had. It was Barnes. So just kind of throwing that out there, it was not Eric Chavez that he was talking to that was giving him pointers before he stepped up to the plate. And you know what? It took a hero's effort from Francisco Lindor, who gave them opportunities, gave Pete Alonso opportunities earlier in the game that he was not able to come through. Your other captain, Brandon Nimmo, getting on right in front of Alonso to set that up, to set up the pressure because... One Pete Alonso home run was not going to do it since you were down two. You needed Lindor to get on. You needed Nemo to get on. And then the big blast happened. So, I mean, it, you could, like I said, we talk about you can't write a better script. It, I just, it's crazy. I mean, I was ready to come on here and go even harder than I did last night on Alonso as far as the rant that I had in store. But now I have to shut up and say that, you know what? And I told him last night, I said, prove me wrong. Get a big hit. He proved me wrong. He got the big hit. So we are really happy because as critical as we've been of Alonzo all season long for his failures or run score position, 291 left on base, most in the league, we wanted him to do well. I mean, that yeah, was exactly. so frustrating. It's like, we don't want to yell about we him. We want, want him to be, be the guy. About him. We it's just like we want, want him to, be to that do guy. what yeah. he's been doing his whole Mets career. Just bring in runs, get big <laughs> hits. And he did it. So I'm, I'm happy, obviously, for the Mets that they get to advance. But I'm happy for him, too. I mean, you know it's weighing on him. You know that there's just been so much pressure that, uh, like, Met fans, including us, have put on him. So uh, for him to get that big hit, it was so huge. And then you have Winker with the two hit-by-pitches. Marte just quietly having a nice little series. Guess that RBI Winker steals a base, and he's throwing down helmets. I mean, it was just – it was a lot going on there in that ninth inning. And then uh, also a very unsung hero – is Edwin Diaz. I feel like not enough people are, are talking about Diaz coming in and putting out the fire that Jose Budo put him in, giving up those two home runs. Diaz comes in the seventh. 
works in the eighth gives up a couple walks but he goes 39 pitches and we talked about how oh, you may have throw 40 pitches against the Braves and what have you and how available is he actually for him to go 40 pitches and be very effective get those strikeouts keep it where it was was really really big and it was allowed them to set the stage and then David Pearson who has basically no playoff experience very little he came in the Padres series a little bit out of the bullpen and not much reliever experience to pitch out that ninth inning I know it was the bottom half of the order but still uh, it was just uh, nice to see that as well it, it was huge and they move on so you know we'll see what happens next but it's like I said in the pre-show I'm glad that they got past the series because you know they showed it 2016 wild card game they lose they don't go very far 2022 obviously at least now we're back in a division series for the first time in nearly a decade so it, it really is just a very exciting and I'm just I, I still can't believe it it was just so crazy the way it happened especially against the pitcher the guy who did it like insane absolutely insane yeah, I, I was ready for him to ground into a double play and for Mets plans to absolutely explode about his future with this team. And now he said, absolutely no way. And um, I mean, I, I feel like my, I don't know if my like voice is going away here. Um, I was screaming so loud, like, cause like we said, like we're here as fans. We may have some strong opinions about players of what they are doing. But we've always been, you know, guys who know what Pete Alonso is capable of. And the thing is, is that what made it so frustrating all year is that he was not coming through when we needed him to come through. Whether we were talking about high leverage situations, runners in scoring position, runners on base, it seemed like every single thing that he did that was actually contributing was either when the team was up by like seven runs or when the bases were empty. And that's just not something that you want to see from somebody uh, who's trying to get a big payday. And at the end of the day, he did the job. And it was great to see. I'm happy. I was so, like, I was so relieved. I was really just relieved to finally see him come through when it mattered because it was a long, and I mean a long 162 games. And throughout that entire series, throughout that entire season, he wasn't coming through. And to see him kind of bust through that narrative in something that could have been his last AB as a New York Met. I mean, you know, he, he, he extended his tenure by putting this team in a position to win. He finally did it. And it was great. And I'm not saying it in a sarcastic way. I'm saying it is in finally he did it and he did it in the biggest spot possible. The team's backs were against the wall. They are facing one of the best relief pitchers in all of baseball. And he did it. He finally did it. Probably he the came best. through. I'll say the Probably best. the best. I mean, Edwin Diaz is still the greatest. But, and listen... <laughs> You may disagree with me on that one, but relievers change, and next year, Edwin Diaz will not give up a single run. He just needs to get healthy. But when we talk about it from the standpoint of Pete Alonso, everything that's been riding on him this year, he needed it. The Mets needed it. He needed it. Mets fans needed it as well, after what they have seen all year of him just coming up short every single time. And we have talked about it constantly all the way up to today's pregame, all the way up to on Twitter tonight, everybody was tweeting shit about, oh, let this guy go, let him go, let him go. Then, 26 innings into the series, he finally comes through. And he does it in the perfect way possible. It's awesome. Great. Now listen, I wish he pulled the fly ball because, again, Shut my up. ego would just sink. <laughs> Um, but you know what? We talk about this all the time, and no matter how analytically driven or how many numbers I will draw up for you and 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 uh, <laughs> and swing out for you, at the end of the day, in the postseason, the only thing that matters is results, and then you move on. I mean that that's it. That's the only thing that matters. Now I'm gonna go get something to drink because my voice is pretty much. Uh, 
spotting out at this point. You guys can continue some of the talking points if you can do it without me. I know it's really hard because I carry the entire show. I understand it. But, uh, Frank, I'll go to you. Andrew, you guys can have uh, some kind of discussion. Just don't talk about wrestling. I'll be right back. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, <laughs> no, I, I think also another hero, Quintana. I mean, I didn't predict six scoreless innings, you know, only one walk. I thought that was big because with how many hitter counts he put guys in, I was afraid that there was going to be more traffic on the bases. We saw Milwaukee finally steal a couple bags tonight, yeah. so that definitely had me worried. But even though he only had the one walk, he still had the four hits, so there were jams, there were runners in scoring position, and he had to make big pitches. And I just found it very fascinating that this was yet another game where Pat Murphy does not let his pitcher go a third time around in the lineup. Meanwhile, for the Mets, Quintana had to face the lineup third time around. So just seeing that difference in approach and just the faith that Mendoza had in Quintana for him to go six scoreless was really, really big for him. The team really needed it, so that was huge. And uh, also the fact that Stanek was warming up in the ninth. Yeah. I, I thought the show went to Stanek over Peterson, but it ended up being the right choice with those two left-handers they have in the bottom half of the order. So those decisions ended up being correct. Uh, but overall, I mean, just like these unsung heroes. And it's tough for Quintana because I feel like, oh, there we go, Ricardo. Awesome. Uh, we'll chat with you in a little bit later for the call-ins. But I, I think overall, it's just really nice that since the Mets were getting shut out for Quintana to match those zeros was big yeah. as well, because that, that was able to keep him in the game. And like we always say, you're just one big swing away. And that's exactly what Pete gave them one big swing. And then one thing I, I do wonder is like with Peterson pitching today, kind of how he does factor in this Philly series, because to be honest, I, with the lefties that the Phillies have, I'm not against keeping them in the pen. I, I have to be honest. I, I'd rather if Sanger's ready, I'd rather say Danny Young, goodbye. So Sango he's, your, he's your new Sean and... Gil Martin to face Bryce Harper? <laughs> no, he's much <laughs> better than Sean Gil Martin. So, right. Yeah, Ricardo oh, coming in with the $10 from us. Um, thank you so much. Saying great win. Shout out to you, Carson and the guys. Wow, it's, that's my just my name. Thanks. Um, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> we please... Um, we please give, can we please give uh, Quintana five minutes before the stream is out? Yeah. Thanks, God. Yeah, I mean, listen, I would love to get into uh, Jose Quintana because, of course, we went into this game. We weren't confident because we knew that this could go either other way. The, mo the first two times that uh, Quintana faced the Brewers, he just didn't go deep into the games. He didn't pitch really bad. He just didn't go deep into the game. He got you six innings, which was great. Um, you were able to push Severino six innings. You got five innings from Manaya yesterday. Um, but to get six innings from him with a rested bullpen, he also came into the sixth uh, against, was it the meat of the order? Like the, the, mm -hmm. the yes, middle of the did. order? Yeah. Contreras yeah. and those guys. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was expecting them to just give him like one more base runner. If he gives up a base runner, they were gonna just going to take him out. Um, but uh, luckily, um, he was able to get through that. It was a fantastic performance by him, continuing a really solid uh, postseason career that um, Jose Quintana has had. So hopefully he can continue that. Um, and it was great to see uh, the fact that, you know, even though Quintana has been up and down this season, for him to come through the way that he did and put us in a position to win, even though the offense was having a really, really rough time against a really good uh, Brewers pitching staff, you know, it was great to see uh, Jose Quintana come through the way that he did. And I really do want to um, get into, of course, the actual summary of this game because it seemed like it was non event for quite a while. But again, there was some craziness, shall we say, of course. Um, the Mets' offense started off this game, could not figure out uh, Tobias Myers whatsoever. Other than Francisco Lindor's two hits, the rest of the lineup would go absolutely hitless and absolutely silent. Trevor McGill would come in on the sixth in relief of Myers and toss a 1-2-3 inning. Jose Quintana would go back out for the sixth, like we just said. And finish it off to end his day. Six innings, six innings pitched, four hits, zero earned runs, one walk, five strikeouts on 94 pitches. In the seventh, Jose Budo would come on um, 
MB greeted rudely by pinch hitter Jake Bowers to open up the scoring with a solo shot. Sal Freelich would follow it up with a home run of his own to make it two to nothing. Edwin Diaz would come in to stop the bleeding, getting the last two outs of the seventh inning. Diaz would come right back out for the eighth and toss a one, two, three inning with two strikeouts to keep the Mets in striking distance the Mets would come up in the top of the ninth with their season on the line having to get through star reliever Devin Williams Lindor would lead off with a walk Nimmo would slash a base hit to make it first to third and that would bring up Pete Alonzo with runners at first and third with one out and Alonzo would finally get his moment slapping a huge three run homer to right field to give the Mets a three to two lead after after Jesse Winker would be hit by the pitch and steal a base. Starling Marte would bring him home for some insurance to give the Mets a 4-2 to two lead. And then the Mets would turn to David Peterson to close it out against the bottom of the order, which I can't even really say is a bottom of the order because they've been pests the entire series. And he would toss a scoreless inning on eight pitches to secure the series victory the Mets advance to the NLDS to play the Phillies notching their first playoff series win since 2015 and their first playoff series win in the Steve Cohen era all right well the full-on unfold of this game of course there's other factors that have to go in of um you know the rally that they put together was great, um, but let's just say the first eight innings, the offense w- looked nowhere to be found. And even though this is a great pitching staff that the Brewers have, I mean, it was looking to go in that direction of elimination game Mets, where 2016, they didn't hit a complete lick for uh, Noah Syndergaard. Uh, what was it, 2022, one hit, in the elimination game against the Padres. And that was kind of the trajectory it looked to go on. Uh, But the Mets uh, put a full stop to that in the ninth. But, I mean, this this was getting quite frustrating, let's just say that, to see them just laid down like they did in those first eight innings. Uh, Frank, what did you see from the offense before? Because I'm not going to lie, I was getting... Whew, I, I was getting heated. I was getting very, very heated from seeing a lot of these these guys chase, whiff at a lot of things in the zone, and also staring at strikes. There was so much of that. Yeah, I think the big thing that really stands out to me is there was Lindor and there was everybody else. Now, when you think about it in the grand scheme of things, it makes sense because one hitter in today's Mets lineup has played in the World Series before. His name is Francisco Lindor. And you kind of felt that. He looked like he the same guy that we've seen all year, not pressing, not changing his approach, just up there, put good swings on balls, get hits, do his thing. Everyone else, they just looked like it was their first time in a huge game. It, it, like they hadn't really been there before, which for some of these guys, they haven't really been there, especially like Vientos is the one that stands out. Like this is a, a new experience for him. Even Alvarez is a new experience for him because Tomas Nito was catching in the do or die game for the Mets in 2022. So for some of these guys, it is a bit of a new experience. But Lindor, he was just kind of calm, cool, and collected. And he was doing a great job. And, you know, just the Mets win, so it doesn't matter. But I do find it interesting that J.D. Martinez was nowhere to be seen in this ball game. Once again, I feel like, now again, with Tyrone Taylor, I like Taylor. I, I'm This is not a knock at him at all. But he is a fourth outfielder. I mean, I think we could all agree yes, on that. Absolutely. He's a fourth outfielder. And J.D. Martinez, I know it's been a struggle for him. But I feel like, why is he here? Because if he's not going to pinch it for Taylor, I would rather just have Brett Beatty because let's have another infielder on the roster I, at this rate. I mean, you know what I mean? I feel like it gives you more flexibility, gives no lefty bat. Because if, if he's not going to be batting for Taylor, he shouldn't be here. Because then what's he doing? So he's the other guy who would have had experience playing in the world series in the lineup but I, I just find that very fascinating that they stuck with taylor the whole game even all the way it was i think he batted in the eighth inning and they just they stuck with him and he went over four with the strikeout so that was not good but overall from this offense too many strikeouts and obviously led by vientos with his three strikeouts so uh stuff like that uh, was very frustrating and like andrew said especially when you saw so many fastballs over the plate and just whiffing on them that was really just frustrating because you're like these are hittable pitches and no one could seem to catch up with it so that definitely was uh, very annoying but then 
it, it was kind of one of those things where like once you saw McGill come in, you felt like, oh boy, we're in trouble now because we didn't do it against Myers. That was your best chance. And once they couldn't do that, you were definitely like, oh, things are only going to get tougher now. And then the things when then we got the toughest facing Devin Williams, that's when they got the job done. So I, I did find that really interesting. Uh, but just overall, I mean, Winker getting a couple hit by pitches. Like I said, that was nice just to see him get on base and just kind of playing that overall villain role. Now, when he stole that base, that bad back was bothering him again. I did see after the game he had the heating wrap around that back. So it's still something to monitor. I know the MRI came back clean, but it's something that definitely is still ailing him a little bit. And you know what? In the game one, you are going to see Wheeler, who is a right-handed pitcher. So just uh, something to consider and just something to monitor as we get ready for that series. DJ Stewart coming back. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Andrew, I'll go to you on the offense, obviously, before uh, the explosion in the ninth inning. Um, it, it There was, I don't know, it just, it really looked like they were heading towards that elimination game uh, type of force in the wild card round. And yeah, I, I just, I mean, it got close. Let's just say that. Yeah. I mean, like we said, I mean, the strikeouts, especially again, M Myers, who again, isn't throwing hundred and he said, I still 95 and he's got a slider. I mean, that's pretty much it. But it, look, I think it was the fourth inning. It was Marte Taylor Alvarez. He literally threw the same sequence to every single one of them. And struck on both Alvarez and Taylor on fastballs looking. It was like a fastball and he threw a slider and then down and away fastball got them both looking. With the same sequence in it at the, as the previous at bat, is nobody watching the game? Because this literally, he just threw a first with fastball, slider, then he got on a paint, Marte and Taylor on fastballs like outside corner. And I'm like, is nobody, you know, picking that up from the dugout, you know, our hitting coach, you know, who doesn't want to look at the computer? So what are you looking at, Buzz? Since you hate analytics and hate the computer, so what are you doing besides the point? But, yeah, again, it's – and we've seen it hundreds of times in big moments with the Mets. The bats go quiet. I mean, Lindor, you know, we kind of gave him a little bit of shit last night as well. But, you know, he was the only one that seemed to show up when the games mattered the most before, obviously, that explosion. But, again, Wanker getting on base twice, you know, two, two HBPs, that's about it besides Lindor. And, again, Vientos, another rough game with three more 3Ks. But, overall, he had a pretty solid series, in, series overall. But, again – over that bottom half of the lineup, besides Starling and Marte, who again has had a really good series, you know, throughout the whole series, him and Marte, him and Vrientos, you could say have were the most consistent of the two anybody else in this lineup. So at least it's good to see raising that trade value in the offseason. That's always good to see. But again, overall, it, it was a typical Mets elimination game. But again, this magic power of Grimace, Seymour Wiener, and bullshit. And there you go. And we don't really talk about it because the only one to talk about is that ninth inning. Mm, yeah. Obviously, it all just kind of like uh, washes away, of course. You know, there was some frustrations last night, of course, and, you know, it all washes away now. They won the series. They're moving on. Uh, some people in the chat here saying, you know, Marte was on this series, of course. Captain Lindor, Christopher coming in. Uh, Jonathan also in here. Shout out to all of you guys in here as well. For those of you who have not already, make sure to like the stream. Uh, hit the sub button. For those of you watching right now, I'm, I don't know if it's on sub mode or anything, um, but I think uh, we'll just let the messages uh, flow through. If you're a Mets fan and you want Mets coverage that we give you before and after every single post game, uh, this is the place to be. Now, <clears throat> the, when it comes to uh, the rarity of how crazy this is, Devin Williams pitched yesterday, and I was thinking, like, okay, maybe Devin Williams just is not, um, he just is not, uh, you know, great on back-to-back -back days or whatever. Looking at the days of rest, it looks like in his career he has given up two runs on back-to-back -back days with zero day rest, zero days rest. So, um, yeah, this was quite a rarity of a moment, and to get it from your big bat, um. I mean, that's a that's crazy. To, that is just absolutely crazy, and I think that they just did a phenomenal job just fighting all the way back like they did. But I think that it also shows, um, not to be negative or anything, but it really just shows and just proves my point once again. And I think everybody can agree at this point. Let me know in the chat if you actually do agree. Say, yes, Carson, I do agree. They have 
two levels. Zero and 100. That's when it comes with this offense. They can't spread anything around. It's either they just do everything in one inning or they just disappear. And that's literally just what it is. Um, um, but uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, but when it comes to uh, some other news uh, that just dropped about two seconds ago, I do want to say one thing and announce it. Mike Puma, the New York Post, just tweeted out that Kodai Senga is in the conversation for a spot on the Mets NLDS roster, which is great uh, to hear. And, you know, maybe we will see something, but most likely he will come out of the pen. Maybe that does move Peterson to the rotation equation, maybe. I don't know. Um, but we'll see what happens. And, you know, you know, we, we knew that there was a chance that he came back, of course, a uh, very slim chance, uh, cause he was in the middle of rehab. He also, uh, there's no arm, it's no arm injury. He didn't injure his arm this time. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, Could he have a that. Willis Reed moment at city field? I mean, I don't know if he's going to come out there limping. I hope he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um but you know uh, hopefully get the crowd i'm going, really though. hoping so uh but that's uh of course more uh nlds talk which we're talking mm -hmm. about the wild card that that's in the future you know we got a rest day tomorrow everybody can rest up um but for those of you sitting back and relaxing and watching our show while we work ourselves to death with our voices um you will enjoy, of course, everybody's favorite segment that I want to bring up, studs and duds. These are pretty uh, obvious, let's just say that. Um, but, you know, we got to point these out, and you guys can let us know in the chat uh, who your studs and duds are as well. Frank, I will go to you, one player that has performed great tonight, one player that didn't. What would you like? Where would you like to go? Yeah. I would like to give it to Mr. Peter Alonzo with a All apology right. as well. I was I was very hard on you, Mr. Peter. I, I do apologize uh, for he how I like acted that. last night. I, I, I definitely was very harsh. I was very critical, but I said, prove me wrong. You did. Huge hit. One of the biggest hits in Mets history, no doubt about it. So listen, I, I said to my dad, I hope this breaks the ice for him. And now he can get rolling. Because if he could do this in the Philly series... Boy, oh boy, do we have a shot. So I, I hope this was kind of just like got him to relax and now he could do his thing. Boy, I hope so. One can only hope. Um, Andrew, I'll go to you. I mean, there's only really one answer. And it's the guy that got the last three outs. I'm kidding. It's Pete Alonso. You have to give, you know, the polar bear his love. Give him his Coca-Cola. He deserves it. Biggest hit in Mets history, the biggest hit of his life. We all ate shit. It's okay. We'll gladly eat this one. Trust me, I'll eat it. So, Pete Alonzo, there you go. There's your there's your gold star yeah. sticker. He showed up. I will, if he comes through like that every single night, I will actually physically eat shit. Like, I don't even care. I, I mean, that's how desperate I am for them to actually win. Um, But I think that, you know... For me, I, I would I would probably uh, add in, uh, sprinkle in uh, Jose Quintana, of course, because he definitely put us in a great position to win this game, even though the offense was definitely not helping him or doing him any favors, giving him a very small margin for error. And Jose Quintana has not bode well with a small margin of error this year. So it was good to see that. Uh, I mean, you obviously can also put Lindor. He was the only one awake for eight innings, so you can put him up there. Uh, but getting into the duds, Andrew, I'll swing this one right back to you. Yeah, again, I, we'll go. We'll go. I will save the obvious. We'll go. Mark Pantos, over four three Ks. Again, yes, there wasn't as much drama and obviously base runners, but again, big moment, big game, and him three Ks. You know, I could say the obvious one, but I'll let you guys have the obvious there. And over with three strikeouts and a, not a great look, but oh, we can. He had overall a good series overall, but just a bad stinker in the in elimination game. Um, Frank, I'll go to you. Yeah, I mean, it has to be Budo. And really, it's just, it's not so much the home runs, but 
these baseballs were annihilated. So Jake Bauer is 106.8 off the bat. South Felix 107.6 off the bat. Felix ball traveled 408. Bauer traveled 405. That Alonzo shot was only 105 and won 367. So, I mean, those were absolute bombs that Budo gave up. So that, that definitely was uh, a bit of a concern. I know something uh, Ricardo mentioned, like what we're going to do with Budo. This has kind of been my philosophy, and I feel like it's something the Mets did during the regular season. However many innings he pitches is how many days he gets rest. So if he pitches like one inning, gets one day. If he pitched two innings, he gets two days and so on and so forth. Because he pitched the two innings, two, day, two games, he only got the one day off. So I feel like as he's getting used to this new role, that's kind of the way I would approach it. There are certain occasions we can go back to back nights. But I think overall, however many innings he pitches is how many days rest he should get. All right, well, uh, let me just say uh, Tyrone Taylor had a really rough night. Let's just say that. It just didn't seem like he was getting really any like great contact whatsoever. He had that ugly strikeout, I'm pretty sure, in the beginning. I can put him in there. Uh, a silent game for Jose Iglesias. Like, usually, I know he made like one nice little play um, early on in the game. That was, that was good to see, um, but... I mean, you can also put Vientos in there as well. Um, but, I mean, I think the real dud here is Devin Williams. I mean, what the hell just happened there? Um, but, of course, on the Mets side, we're talking about this here. Uh, but any other notes we can possibly uh, put out here? Because I feel like, you know, even though it was continued to be a stressful game, they will continue to stress us out. I mean, this has literally just been the Mets' identity, just coming back from behind and just, like, pulling things out of their asses somehow, like a rabbit out of a hat. I don't know how they do it, um, but they were able to do it today. I mean, I don't I don't know. There's there's other uh, pieces to this the, that I would... Um, I also would like to uh, specify, of course, it, I think that this broadcast, in, this broadcasting crew, I mean, I was... I kind of, like, tuned them out a little bit more, but, like, just hearing them in a scoreless game, constantly bring up the zeros of the stat line, like basically saying, oh, well, the Brewers haven't stolen a base yet, or the Mets haven't ho homered yet, or this hasn't, and I'm like just sitting there, I'm like, Jesus Christ, we get it, we get it. And then they bring up all of our losses in the playoffs recently. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying well, to mean, say that ESPN. All the times the Brewers have failed, how many, how many years in a row had the Brewers been to the playoffs? Why aren't they showing that? That they don't I mean, make... they were talking about it. They got their playoff win, right? I mean, they, they got their playoff win yesterday. Um, I mean, I, I mean, it was just so annoying to listen to them just, like, try and feast narratives the way that ESPN always likes to do. So the fact that they did finally get their storybook ending of Pete Alonso, this could be his best bet. I mean, good for them. I'm glad um, because usually those storybook endings don't usually go in our favor. Um, but you did know, you I notice mean, just... that when Bowers hit his home run, the ESPN graphic of the distance was wrong and said like at a negative launch angle, it said it went, yeah. the distance was six. Oh feet. no, the the stack was, cast like... was so was wrong this entire series. <laughs> it was bad the entire series. Yeah, you had like, loud contact, feet. and I'm they like, would come up the... with an EV what of like sixty. On? It was like what the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was just... it was crazy. I mean, I just I don't even know what to say at this point. Um. What a game. What a finish. Uh, I was really, um, I, I was really, uh, at, I was really like just, at the end of the day, I was really at a point where I was ready to go on a, on a huge rant in this, in this uh, thing. And, and to be honest, I still kind of feel the same way regarding Eric, Eric Chavez, of course, but it's just like, when it comes to just the overall inconsistency and the overall just like constant streakiness and the like, you know, he got bailed out like this type of stuff got bailed out um, in a very uh, tight situation here. And I still feel the same way because like you can't find a way with good pitching in the postseason. You just can't do that. Like you just can't put yourself in that position every single time and it's going to work out like you you can't just score zero runs throughout eight innings I mean obviously they still won it worked they got it but it's like 
you know, th there still is some flaws here that, like, at one point, it might run out. I'm really hoping that it happens again. Um, Daniel coming in here and uh, saying something that I think, uh, I don't know if it was, somebody tweet this, tweeted this out, saying, Pete is the first yeah, player in I saw MLB a history to hit a go-ahead yep. home run while trailing in the ninth inning in a winner-take-all postseason game. Uh, so I'm going to guess that's like game sevens, game fives. That's what they're trying to say, like basically uh, sudden death, I guess. We haven't had many. I mean, we've had a few sudden deaths, but we haven't had – like that's a certain situation where that happened. But, I mean, listen, that's something he can add to his resume that actually fucking matters. So that that's great. Um, any other notes that you guys want to say? Like there's le these little details we can point out, and then we'll get into the uh, – Viewer call-ins, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people uh, would like to do. Yeah, no no Maton warming up at all. And then also one more thing with Budo, then we'll get into that. I found it interesting. He started warming up in the fifth, but didn't come into the seventh. I wonder mm -hmm. if that impacted effectiveness at all. I, I did find that a little weird. Yeah, I mean... Do I? Can you hear him? No, Carson, you're muted. Yeah, Carson, you're muted, bud. Yeah. There's some. Oh, oh, he's got some technical difficulties to attend to. I know he's trying to set up the call in, so everyone, Carson's going to drop in a link into the chat. I'll try to pin it in my chat as well. You guys are going to click on that if you want to get your calls in. Remember, it has to be respectful. One strike policy. We're here to talk baseball or sports. Yeah, that's about right. Let's see who we got. And it looks like he is still working on it. So everyone who's here, whether you're on Twitter, hop over to YouTube, get your questions in, get your statements in, join that link that we're going to put in to get your call-ins. And everyone who's here on YouTube, hit the like button. Let's get more Mets fans in here. Let's talk more about this series. Hear what everyone has to say as we get ready for the Phillies. And yes, we do. We will be at City Field. Well, not we, but the Mets <laughs> will be at City Field on Tuesday as they do take on the fine Phillies, the Philadelphia Phillies. And we've seen the Phillies a lot the past two weeks, so it's going to be exciting to go at them once again. Uh, the link will be in the chat shortly. Mets two, uh, right there right here. That's two one two eight. There you there go. There we go. You guys so hear me? Everyone's going to hop yeah, into it. Yes, we hear you. Any echoes you guys hear? Because I I can't use any uh, earpieces right now because it just died. So unfortunately. Uh, but so for those of you who want to call in the show, let you know we are only going to be using audio. Just one thing I will just say. Um, I don't know if you guys covered it already. Please be respectful. Please refrain from using any racial slurs or anything. Um, if you're going to act like an ass, we are going to treat you like an ass. So we got uh, Mets2128 coming in here uh, as our first call in here. Uh, what is going on? Mets 2-1. If there, if you have anything that we could easily refer you to. but uh... You can call me Mets if you want. All right. What's going on? This game gave me a damn heart attack as much, if not more so, than last Monday's wild card win. Mostly because for most of the game, I did not see the Mets go after this with discipline at the plate. It wasn't until the 11th hour they got their heads out of their asses and got this win. This is something we cannot afford. Another thing we can't afford against Philly, Mendoza going out of his way with pitcher gambling, something I have accused him of for the bulk of the season that's cost this team a lot of games. All right. Well, I mean, listen, I think that at some point they made the, they made some of the right decisions today to kind of try and stop the bleeding, I would say. Uh, in, in terms of, like, Edwin Diaz coming in, uh, trying to keep them in, like, that actual position. Um, I mean, but, I get that, but yeah. the fact that he's thrown over 100 pitches over his last three outings, anyone with half a brain knows if your pitcher has been gassed that badly over three of the last five games, including tonight, don't put him in. I mean, he made the mistake of putting mates on in three days straight, and look where that got him last night. Well, I mean, the thing about this is that we, we've talked about this tons of time with the workload of D Edwin Diaz, and I think that that's one thing that we've made as the emphasis. Um, you know, he's the $102 million reliever, so if he if you need him, he needs to be out there. And I feel like, of course, yes, the rest is that. But throughout the season, they also have kind of conserved 
uh, a lot of the bullets this year. Like he has a very low inning total this year. He has way below most of the, some of the relievers. So, I mean, I would say, you know, at one point uh, they, they they made the dis- like they made a decision like. Uh, Frank, I'll go to you uh, on this. Yeah, like with, he you know. hasn't been doing many multi-inning outings during the regular season. It wasn't until this last week or so where they really started to push him a little more because he is still working his way back from that knee injury, missing an entire season. So they are trying to be careful. And I, I think overall, it's more so the concerns of overworking Maton or overworking Diaz. It also has to do with the lack of faith in Danny Young and Adovino and Brazabon. So when you have so many guys and Kranich, when you have so many guys in there who are unreliable, you're going to end up overworking some of your top relievers. Well, then throwing the fact that also the reason we lost a lot of those games in April and May was because no one knew about Diaz having a shoulder issue. Yeah. He had mechanics yeah. that he had to work on. He Remember, Carson, he was compensating a little bit for that knee. Mm. He comes down to the minors, yeah. was able to work his way back up. Yeah, the constant upper body uh, that he was doing because he just could not rely on the knee. Uh, Andrew, if there's anything else you want to add to like with the bullpen, because like, yeah, we've talked about this before. Yes, it's a rookie manager. You know, it's a first time manager and he's going to make some of those mistakes. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm letting, you know, I'm, I'm letting him make those mistakes and hopefully he learns from them. Of course, I think that they've settled it okay down the stretch of the season, but Again, I mean, there's still some questionable calls and everybody's going to question their manager. And then, um, uh, let yeah. me address the polar bear in the room for a minute. would have said right. elephant, but that'd be too obvious. What is crippled Pete's productivity? His agent telling him, hit like Aaron Judge. Be Aaron Judge. Be more professional. BS. That does Pete more harm than good. We saw it this whole year's productivity. to the nose nosedive when he took the judge yeah. approach. I was even screaming at Pete one point. Go back to how you're supposed to be. Be you, not the guy across the way in another borough. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we already know that he's not Aaron Judge, and there's no I mean, I reason as to why if, he should if try. I, you know? If I was in Pete's shoes and my agent told me that, I would have kicked him in the dick and kicked him to the <laughs> curb. I love this guy's passion. This is great. Andrew, if anything you want to add to this. I mean, again, yes, when you've got Boris, yes, you obviously are going to have bullshit. You're going to have to deal with Boris bullshit because, hey, overall, besides the last couple of years, he usually gets his clients a decent amount of money. And obviously, this is all about money. So, but yeah, I think it's 100%. Pete, you know, is not the, you know, put him in a suit, put him in front of the microphone and, you know, you're the face of the, co- face of the company, face of the brand. No, he's a dumbass that is going to dry hump, you know, the dugout or do the stupid shit that he does, LFGM. That's who he is. And, again, maybe this is Boris, like you said, is in his head and wants to put him a suit. You know, he's trying to put a polar bear in a suit. Polar bears don't wear suits. Let him just be him. And, hey, if this is the homer that, you know, breaks that down, and he can go be – when was the last time he actually said LFGM? Like, in a post-game interview. Because it's been a while he, since he, he said, said it today. That. It yeah. some, that's what I'm saying. He said it today. Yeah. When was the last time before today he's actually said that? Yes, well, he, hasn't he been... wasn't getting interviewed that's, much because yeah. he wasn't the hero yeah. of the game. It was so. Nemo getting interviews, Lindor getting interviews. It wasn't him. So It was on El Acuna getting interviews in weird ways. Yeah, exactly. So. I mean, but then yeah, again, I mean... that's a consequence of Boris. You need to kick him in the dick to shut him up and quit playing that crap. I mean, if Pete gets his head out of his ass and dumps this son of a, this SOB... I would be fully content with that. All right. <laughs> Beyond that, I don't have anything else left to say. But get me a cheesesteak because I want Philly. Hey, you, right. you got them. I love it. We got awesome. them. All right. So, uh, Mets, we're going to have to let you go here. Uh, I know. We'll, I'm we'll on my way out. Next uh, voice. <laughs> All, right. All right. Up next. All right. Uh, Urza, we're going to bring you in. Oh, gee. a long time. Uh, this yeah, is Merlin, OG. aka Merlin. Uh, Merlin, what's going on? What a game! First of all, that was wow. I, when those hitting those first two home runs, I was just rapid. I was about to turn off and went to sleep. But then I had a feeling just to go back and turn it off. I listened to a little bit of the Howie radio during the ninth inning, and then when he saw they said like Brandon Newman got a hit base, I was like, all right, here we go. And when P. Alonso hit the homer, I just started jumping because I really never saw enough joy as a Mets fan my entire life up to there. If really anything, that was probably P. Alonso's 
biggest hit in his entire career. Mm-hmm. Of say, course, no doubt. And honestly, that could probably save him from not leaving, depending on how the C series goes. Honestly, the Philadelphia series is probably going to be, in my opinion, probably the most historical series because we never really had any relations or good friendship with Philly historically. Right? But I want to hear you guys, your takes about your ninth inning and what you guys felt during the inning. I mean, it's pretty much what I would establish every single time, talking about uh, you know the outside noise of fans constantly winning heals all and when you come through like that it changes the narrative and the narrative this entire year has been that pete alonzo has not been able to come through in these big moments uh when you constantly just like when he constantly has just uh failed as much as he has um you know it was starting to get very frustrating not to mention we also had some dumbfound moments from him we know the Hmm. how he kind of carries himself is kind of just a goofball of a player um and i think that you know they he came through when it mattered and then that just makes pretty much everything else okay like we have said multiple times you know he could wear a tutu for all we care he can do whatever he wants as long as he hits hits home runs and he drives runs in. He wasn't doing it this year, so a lot of people were just sick of his shit. And, uh, you know, even before that even happened, what was it, eighth inning, seventh inning, he even dropped a pop-up or something, mm-hmm. and we're just like, okay, yeah, this is done. We are finished. We have moved past the need for Pete Alonso. Then he comes up in the ninth inning, and he gets the big hit, and it all just gets turned around. I mean, that's kind of just the emotions of, Met- of Mets fans in a nutshell. You know, we want to win, and, you know, if there's something in the way that keeps us from winning, we're going to go after you. Uh, And if there's something that helps us winning, we're going to praise you. I mean, that's just kind of how it is. Um, You know, just like how this Mets team, like I've talked about with their offense, 0-100. Frank, I'll go to you on this one if you want to talk about this ninth inning. You're muted, bud. Yeah, I think you're muted. <laughs> Lind- Lindor's at bat in the ninth inning was a tough one. I mean, he had to fight off some very tough pitches. He had to kind of check his swing and, and draw that walk. So, you know, facing Devin Williams to start off that inning with the Brewers having all the momentum. So he really had to battle just to get on base in the first place to set everything up. And then, you know, same thing, like I said, goes to Nemo. And then once Nemo got there, you're like, okay, now we have a chance. We have the time runs on the pressure is on Deb Williams a little bit. They need to have their mound visit. And then it's Alonzo's opportunity to come through. And he finally did. So, I mean, that, that definitely was huge that Lindor again was able to set the table, set the tone like he has for this team all year. Uh, Andrew, what did you think? Yeah, I think similar. I, I was honestly doing the same thing Merlin was doing. I turned off the ESPN broadcast. Like I had like, like we've said off. I turned that shit off. I went, I was sitting down here. I had Howie ready to go and listening. And when Lindor, like you said, tough AB, maybe one of the toughest ABs you're going to get all of all in ugh, all year against one of the best relievers in baseball. He fights it off. Nim gets the hit, and you're sitting there. You're like, okay. Like, again, but how many times do we, have we seen this where it's the false hope, especially with this guy, you know, coming to the play? How many times do we sit here and be like, okay, you know, here you go? And it finally happened. And again, like, I think we all made just a myriadic sound. I think we heard it throughout the whole universe that Mets fans made the sound that we needed. And, hey, he deserves it. But, again, it doesn't happen off Francisco Lindor, as always. If he doesn't draw that good A.B. Philly's uh, series win at City Field, taking three out of four. I was um, there. <laughs> you were there. You were there. You were in attendance for one of those games. Were you there for the, the walk, the, the Taiwan walk? No, Walker the Saturday game? one. Um, no, uh, no, it was the Saturday game against mm. uh, Suarez. So mm. Okay. Yeah. Not bad, um, Andrew. What do you What do you think about uh, going into Philly? Are you What's the confidence level? Yeah, it's definitely like we said a better matchup. Again, you're not doing besides like Trey Turner, maybe Brandon Marsh. The run game's not going to be an issue. Uh, but also, you have you're facing a team that actually plays 2024 baseball, and that is ball go boom. But we've also seen. Well, uh, I mean, the Brewers had a bunch. So well, we're again, used out, to the long ball already. Out, <laughs> outlierish, but but yeah. yeah. Goddamn <laughs> noodles hitting bombs. This I'm so sick. And thank God we're done with them. But uh, now I can just be like with the Phillies. But we've seen with the Phillies in the postseason. Yes, they have been dominant, and they've had, obviously against the Braves. But we've seen them in big moments, even at CBP, 
they have had a big offers where Turner and Castellanos and Schwarber throw up those big offers. And yes, you still have to do a Bryce Harper in the postseason. We know in that behemoth that is that is CBP. Uh, how I look at it, which we'll preview it, you got to get one to start in Philly, and then you get to come home. So at this point, yeah. it's a good matchup. You do have a really good pitcher matchup with Wheeler going game one, but again, I'm not saying Tyler McGill is going to out deal him again, but you got a really good pitcher in there, and Wheeler starting the series off. And then Aaron Nola, who, again, historically, we've had good numbers. So again, you look at the pitching, yes, we're going to be in the disadvantage on paper, but again, we've seen how many games, we've seen them a bunch the last two weeks, having two a four-game set and a three-game set, and even the series we lost in Philly that second the second week of September, or third week of September, they were, we whooped their ass in game one, and then it was slight bullpen mismanagement that cost us the other two games. So again, these games have been close. Historically, the last couple of years, we're playing them well. And then obviously you have the rivalry with the fans. And it isn't in how crazy that we have the new cool rivalry with the Padres and the uh, Dodgers on one side, and then New York versus Philly on the other side. I guess they I don't think they've matched up for a while in the postseason. And there, I guess there is hatred, but, but it hasn't been recent hatred. But again, anytime you could put the Phillies and the Mets in prime time in the playoffs, you know the fans are going to be lit, the buildings are going to be lit, and we're going to enjoy it. Yeah. Definitely uh, the idea of this one, it's probably the same idea of – like what it was in 2015, you got to steal a game in Philly. You got to steal at least one game in Philly. And then you get back to City Field, which the Mets, I think they've won a majority of those games at home against the Phillies. And they've uh -huh. won a lot of them. Uh, they've won a lot of home. They have won a lot of home division games this year. Of course, it's a different atmosphere. Anything can happen. Um, but again, I think that they do match up a lot better against a Phillies team like this. Uh, as compared to a team like the Brewers, who definitely tormented us for five straight games this year. But then the Mets got the final uh, laugh. Let's just say that. Speaking of the final laugh, Reese Hoskins, hitless in this series. Uh, something we can say. I think he got hit by a pitch once or something. But yeah, other but than the base that, is loaded. But the base is loaded. Yeah, with yeah. the base is loaded. But other than that, he was completely silent. You didn't get anything from him. Um, everybody else around him did fairly well. Uh, we know Jackson uh, Cherio. Cherio Ortiz was be... hitless in this series. That's I think he was like over Ortiz... twelve or, mm -hmm. or so. He was one of the pieces in the Burns trade, correct? If I'm not, yeah, just... that sounds right. Yeah, yeah, him yeah. and DL. Okay. Yeah. yeah, him and DL all. Okay, so and Ortiz um, was one of like those four guys I mentioned. Actually, had an OPS plus above 100. He was at like 101. So. It's just, uh, and like all these other guys, they're like in the 80s, they were hitting home runs yeah. all over the place. But it was just a weird series. And yeah, well, I guess one last thing, which for me was the best thing, the fact that it was Bryce Terang that hit into the double play for the much mm. bullshit that he's put oh, yeah. us through. Yes. That was yes. just... Uh, enough which of this also made it more impressive for Lindor going unassisted. Like, yeah. I mean, the way he turned that was incredible. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> Jeez, I mean, what else can you ask for in a winner go home game just to be coming back the way that they did, of course? Um, but the full on production, um, I mean, it, it definitely had a little, there was a little bit of concern there, I will say, but they somehow found a way to pull it out. And that's literally just the story of this Mets team. They just continue to come back from behind when they get gut, a gut punch. They punch right back, and they get the last laugh. We know that the gut punch that um, Reese Hoskins gave us at the beginning of the season, which he's seemed to do for a long time, let's just say that, dating all the way back to Jacob Rom being just a complete Jesus. asshole. Um, but, I mean, I, mean I, don't, I don't know what to say anymore. I mean, the Mets got the last laugh here. Hopefully the momentum carries into Philly, a much-needed rest day. Um, the Mets definitely made it difficult, um, but they did what they needed to do. Um, so I do want to apologize to anybody in the stream, uh, kind of uh, setting anybody off guard for uh, anybody that uh, called in and made a complete ass of themselves. Um, definitely threw me off guard a little bit, a um, little, uh, little bit of... Uh, back and forth there but uh we're just looking to settle this one in a little bit and any of our other thoughts we can just get in out there for those of you in the chat um we're most likely just going to call it for the uh call-ins um but as for uh just in the chat 
let us know any questions that you guys have going into this one. Um, but there's other stuff that we can obviously uh, banter on about uh, because we are celebrating here going into the NLDS, even though uh, I'm a little bit frustrated at this current moment. I'm sure everybody knows why. Um, but as for um, other stuff that we saw out there, Wait, what? Okay, here's 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 something um, from SNY. Just posted a video. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, JD Martinez. He talked about the Mets uh, blocking out the outside noise and not having pressure on them in the playoffs. He says, "You know what? They say we suck. We suck. Let's suck. Let's go suck together and let's go have fun sucking." That's what that's nice. what JD Martinez just said. So hey, Respect. I mean, let let's not let's not forget um talking about that uh team meeting that they had back on May 30th that pretty much changed the trajectory of this season. You know, uh J- JD Martinez had a very um insightful quote saying basically let's play like we have nothing to lose. And uh that definitely got them going as a team. Um, so it was, I mean, that's, that's pretty funny to hear. Of course we can, you know, bring in some other post game comments as well. Um, see what we think of it. Uh, I, I don't really want to, um, you know, uh, I, I don't want to hear what, uh, Pete Alonzo said, to be honest, because, you know, I'm just, he, I've, I've, he gave I've, credit to the pumpkin that he picked, uh, this past week. Yes, he said it's the playoff pumpkin. pumpkin. Oh, okay. He legitimately uh, said that he was is... holding it and everything. Jose Iglesias just said, uh, shared with Steve Gelbs, uh, saying that he told Pete Alonso in the eighth inning, be ready yes, because that. the next inning you're going to hit a home run. Listen, I mean, the the Latin pop star, he's never wrong, I guess. I mean, he's he's a magical yeah, he's a fortune he's a teller, creature. too. I mean, he really does it all. Yeah. I mean, at, at the end of the day, okay. um, awesome. you know, the veteran leadership, again, it's just a very big impact on this team. Let's just say that. And you – have a good selection of the young guys as compared to these other um, pieces that we had where it was just pretty much just all veterans and it seemed like they all kept to themselves. Um, and also but, uh, Mendoza with another like very fired up speech in, in the clubhouse, pop of the champagne. Mm-hmm. I mean, just the way this team celebrates and the way how they treat like every win like they won it all, it wouldn't happen under the Buck Showalter regime. But no. again, I just feel like the personalities that you have here, it works. I, I just feel like Mendoza meshes with these guys so well that they have so much fun when they play, even when it's these massive games that, like we say, the power of friendship, it, it just seems to be carrying them along the way. So uh, I, I just love the way everyone just has a lot of fun and it makes it more enjoyable as a fan to watch. Let's just okay. say one thing. Um, I mean, I don't know how packed that house was at City Field for the watch party. But let's just say the reaction from Pete Alonso hitting that home run. Wow. I mean, imagine that stadium when we have games for game three. I mean, it is going to be rocking there. Uh, the stadium might shake, may come off the hinges. Um, I mean, I don't even know uh, how to even describe the atmosphere of what it is. Um, because, I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, what we're seeing right now. I mean, to see them come back the way that they did, where they just were not hitting for eight innings, it looked like this was just going to be another one that just turns down the way that they just don't hit in these elimination games, this goddamn wild card series that they can't seem to overcome, and then they overcome it in the ninth inning. In fashion of this team, just constantly, every year, gut punch, punch back even harder. Like, that's just basically continues to be the identity of this team. And if they do need a gut punch uh, to keep going, it'd be great. Yes, it would stress us out, obviously, because while it's happening, it's it's tough to watch. Of course, everybody, um, I'm sure, was very, um, very, very just like, I don't, I don't think they were nervous. I think they were just sad at the time when they went down to nothing. Because they're just like, at that point, you're like, oh, shit. I mean, you're like, oh, well, team exceeded expectations, but to lose like that, I feel like with me, we've played like we've had nothing to lose, just like J.D. Martinez said back in May. But, you know, 
I, I think that when you look at these types of victories, it all really has to do with the story that they put out there when they lose. If they get blown out, they get blown out. You're like, okay, whatever. But if you lose on like a game winner or you lose in the extra innings, that's one that really stings. When the team wasn't hitting, I mean, I was like half and half, like, okay, this game is close, but they weren't hitting. I mean, they did it to themselves. Like if they lose, they didn't hit. That's the reason as to why they lost. And you understood it and you were able to accept it right then and there. Um, but, you know, to have that dramatic fashion for them to just come on the winning side of things after being pretty much lifeless for eight innings, unless your name is Jose Quintana, who absolutely dealed today. I mean, uh, I mean, what else can you ask for? I mean, storybook endings are great. They get your blood pressure pumping. Let's just say that. Uh, but, you know, when you look back at them, they make you some memories. Andrew, I'll go to you. I know you have some thoughts. Is there a day off between game, if there is a game four to game five? Probably. Yeah, okay. if they have to travel. You, you know if what they don't day give they... us any off days because it's New York to Philadelphia, that would yeah. be actually, I actually would like be upset to be honest. Because you know um, what it seems game like five, this team, yeah. you know. But, you know what game five yeah. would line up with on what date? The day that the OMG remix is dropping. So could you imagine if they win this? Let's say the series goes five, and then the post games, and let's say they win this series, they're gonna and have they bring up he brings bring out Pitbull, Pitbull, <laughs> Pitbull out in the celebration <laughs> in Philadelphia. That, that post game be, in Philly. That that would be, um, oh yeah, it would be in Philly. So probably in would Philly. not be <laughs> bring Pitbull. Um, in. <laughs> they they probably would have to like uh, run for cover to be honest, because the Philly fans would actually probably kill them. Um, but if it was at City Field, that probably would be the most Mets, uh, 2024 Mets thing to possibly do. Um, this team's just a bunch of dorks. I don't know what to yeah. tell you. I mean, they really are just a bunch of dorks. But if these dorks end up getting us some hardware, listen, if it were, it's Dorking only out. crazy if it doesn't work. You know, that's just how mm -hmm. it is. Um, and, and then we signed a super team in the offseason, and then we went become a dynasty. It's all good. Yep. Uh, caution coming in saying it wouldn't be the Mets if we weren't tortured and it wouldn't be fun. Well, Oof. that last part. I mean, yeah. if only. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think mean, everybody yeah, this is now be... two in a row, like near heart attacks that were wins mm -hmm. between the double hair in Atlanta and this, like within the span of a few days. <laughs> on the road, may I add week. as well. Like, Hostile environments on the road. Um, I mean, ugh, crazy. Just absolutely crazy. Um, I, I think that um, we, we did kind of luck into it um, a little bit, I would say, because I kind of was hoping when we went to Atlanta to take both games a little bit because I was like, okay, Padres, we matched up well against them. Nope. And then I'm no, seeing we, them nope. dismantle nope. <laughs> the <laughs> like, Braves nah. the way that they yeah. did. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll take Milwaukee. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Let, let them and the Dodgers battle it out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. We'll take we'll take whoever survives. We're good. Tire we'll themselves whoever. out a little bit. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, oh, but God. We'll see. I I don't know. You know, we we don't know if this is the uh, you know this is the next stop on the ride. Of course, we live to see at least another three games, uh, which also means that we will have yet another pregame uh, on Saturday. So make sure to tune in for that about uh, ninety minutes before the game starts. I don't know what the uh, time. Um, four o'clock. Excuse me. Four o'clock. Uh, four four o'clock on game Saturday one. and Sunday. Yeah. Okay. So Saturday and Sunday will be four o'clock. So most likely um, 2.30 uh, pregame shows, most likely. Uh, and then afterwards, we will have um, the postgame shows, which will be the podcast. I do wonder if the Mets stay in the playoffs as long as uh as we can to where it hits episode 100 i would be curious to see um i i personally want to do episode 100 as like something a little bit separate but if they're in the middle of the playoffs in the middle of the playoffs or we got no world choice yeah, um world. if they win a world series most likely we will be it but that we have still have 10 episodes to go of course um we're gonna go guys for another uh 10 minutes
and then uh, we're going to shut it off here. Uh, I would have liked to go a little bit longer, uh, but there were other people who had other plans decided to ruin it for everyone. Um, but other than that, uh, let's just say the atmosphere is going to be crazy. Let's just say that. We have playoff baseball back here in October. Brandon Nimmo didn't lie. Remember when he said, um, you know, we want to bring it back here, and uh, this is not going to be Pete's last game or whatever. I think that was Mendoza who said that. Mm -hmm. They were right. They ended up being right. They had to, you know, scrape it out at the end there for it to happen. And they had to go to three games in Milwaukee against a really pest of a team uh, yeah. in Milwaukee. But um, they still ended up getting the victory against a team that they really don't match up well against. Um, and they found a way to do it. And uh, hopefully... They find a way with a team that they match up a little bit better against in Philadelphia. Um, but we know that that team can be dangerous in the postseason. So, mm -hmm. But again, we'll also we'll bring up the history of the wild card. The division series winners don't end, usually end up winning. So I'm just saying. Yeah, and, and you have to wonder, is there any rust for Philly? I mean, they haven't played in, in quite a while now, almost a full week. Well, so. I mean... Braves fans were bitching about that, and the Braves players were bitching about that uh, the last two mm -hmm. years. Like, oh, there's a layover or whatever. Um, and Phillies fans were saying, shut the fuck up. So, I mean, maybe they'll uh, pay back. I don't know, they'll do it a different way. But, um, you know, if they come out flat, we got to take advantage. Again, like we said, we got to steal one game from Philly. And mm -hmm. best way to do that probably is in game one, where there might be some rust. There could be some rust. Who knows? Um, but we'll see. Philly's good. They are, they are really good. So, um, it's definitely going to be quite the battle. Um, uh, to be honest, I'm hoping that it goes to five games cause it would be quite a, quite a, uh, battle. Cause to be honest, I, I personally, again, I don't want this is another elimination. Game. I, yeah, I want to sweep. Like, I just yeah, want to sweep. Can we just yeah, please like, no, I, I, I get it. I, I get it. But when I, when I, when I'm saying it from the other side here, is, like, let, no, but cars, it's like you said, let, can we win something in New York? Like, can we please have a little no. bit of a celebration? On when the hell will that will happen? That's never going to happen. Oh my goodness. We just, I under, I understand that. But to be honest, this Philly team matches up so well against us that I feel like the only way we win this will be in five games. Mm -hmm. And maybe there is a maybe there is like a different way that maybe the Mets start off 2-0 and they steal both games in Philly somehow. I don't think they will, hey, but hey, rusty Phillies, we always make Aaron Nola our, you know, Aaron Nola were his daddy up 2-0, game 3, David Peterson close him out, sweep him out, let's go. He just had to put David Peterson in there. <laughs> Yep. That, that was that was it. I don't um, even think PD's even starting the Mets game the three though. Pest. I feel like it would be um, we McGill, be. Sevy, Manana, no, or I'm just, I'm just... probably no. yeah. No, uh... yeah. Well, no, McGill will probably get game ready. One. McGill's most no, likely getting game one. Yeah. yeah, McGill's game one, but then game two, I don't think. I would think Sevy really goes ready. two, then Manaya, because it'd be the day off between. Manaya would no, go Sevy could go Sunday. Yeah. He pitched Tuesday. So, yeah, that works. But I think we're asking the wrong question here, boys. Win that city field game. Who's throwing out the first pitch? Mm, what legend's coming out? What legend's coming? Actual Met legend or meme legend? You got choices. <laughs> well, I, feel, I do that's think the that thing. we are I probably... I feel like if they're ahead, I can see them going meme. I really could. I, I, do, I do think that no matter what you're going to have a return of Grimace. It's just going to happen be. sometime during the playoffs. Play Austin's I don't know when song, it will. Get him out here. Yes, sir. Get at ass one out point, here. it's going to happen. Like at one point, whether you're, whether the, let's say they go to the, the NLCS or the, uh, even I the World Series. Serious. The place it's gonna crazy, happen. honestly. <laughs> it's going to happen. This came out again. I, yeah, so. I, I feel like he would probably get, Maybe Can like we... a bigger standing ovation than Pete Alonso got last oh, yeah. week in, against 100%, Philly. Like, hundred percent. I feel well, like no, everyone's Pete, embraced I think it people so much. finally get the legit ovation once once we get to New York for yeah. the home run. I mean, he deserves it. Like, I think we get yeah. a big, big reception. When and then we, other we damage he does home. in Philly too. So that would also help too. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully there's more to celebrate. Exactly. Yeah. Um, 
Mookie Wilson or Daryl Strawberry. Those, Those are some really good picks. We know Mookie is very uh, involved with the team. Uh, even before uh, Steve Cohen took over. I mean, he was really involved. With it, it would be interesting with the Wheeler connection if Beltron could throw out a first pitch. I know Wheeler's yes. pitching in Philly, but I yes. feel like that whole dynamic. <clears throat> mm. That would be interesting. That actually would be cool. Not going to lie. The, or how have we not? It's Grimace that's David throwing Wright. it. And David what about Wright's Adam Wainwright? It. Shut up. No, <laughs> definitely not. That man is banned. Dude, if they put Adam Wainwright on the broadcast... Oh, for the playoffs on us. Hey, Mike, actually... Smoltz, Smoltz is doing the West Coast. They already confirmed that. Smoltz Good. is doing the Padres Dodgers series. So we won't be hearing. Thank God. We're on Fox, videos. correct? Yes. We're There's on Fox. Be some Fox so and FS1. You could have. A little bit too. You could have Adam Wainwright, correct? Wainwright, is he on Fox or ESPN? Yeah. Brzezinski, yeah. Wainwright. Hey, All right. No caution. caution continuing with caution his Caution worked the graveyard shift to pull that out. He saved it till after midnight. He's just midnight right. spending. It. He's just too tired. He's like, I don't know what to do. Gosh, this. and giving us the five away. bucks. Thank you so much. We appreciate it, um, though. Appreciate it. Again, for those of you who want to donate to the stream, you can. They will. Um, donations <laughs> donations uh, are not required at all, oh, but they, they are kind of accepted. Are after the night we had a, a little while ago. <laughs> I, I kind of need Yeah. To, it's been a rough night. Not, not the med stuff, cool. but those that know, no. Some morons. Yeah. Night. Exactly. For those of you who were in here, um, this show was supposed to go a little bit longer than it will. Um, but there were some people that had other plans. So a um, little bit frustrating, let's just say that. But again, we're just kind of here. Um, we're just kind of filling in a little bit of the time, talking, chilling with you guys, uh, mainly because we're just celebrating a series win, one that we have not gotten in over nine years. That's our first uh, playoff series win. Personally, I call it a playoff win. I he says in Florida, Frank. He already said it. He said on yeah. the podcast, he was like, gone. see you that guys man, in February. That man, is, that man has no interest. Yeah, he's he out. Yeah. I feel like that he'll man. come back to like spring training or something. And he'll be like, wait, we won, we we, we, we did this in the playoffs? Exactly. Like, he wouldn't even know. <laughs> wait, they didn't um, bring him, like, to do the, pre I guess, maybe when they go to City Field. They didn't have him for the pregame on SOI. Obviously, I don't have SOI. They I saw Gary, Gary, Cohen. Yeah. Cohen. Yeah, no, Cohen. Gary Cohen. Gary's on the there, yeah. And Ron is going to be doing the Yankees series. TBS, so. Yeah. Yes. You know, the TBS, so. He's so just and, <laughs> well, there well, I is. Remember, I remember when the Mets got to the World Series, they got all three of them the to do some pregame. Yeah, so, yeah. If you get that far, maybe you could work something out. Mm. Leave Haji at home. And, uh, game, game for War saying, uh, hopefully there is more to come. Uh, not for you three Alonzo haters. That uh, that kiss he blew was a goodbye kiss for you guys. Um, you guys are the type of fan that drives stars like him out of New York. Okay, well, here's the thing. We criticize players when they don't get the job done, but we gave credit to oh. him. Um, when you get offered over $150 million, you say no, you could drive yourself out. Like they, they yeah, gave him the opportunity true. to stay. Listen, so, I mean, he, that, that, that is the him. ultimate. I mean, it, take, it takes two to, to tango, me. does it not? Yeah, absolutely. I don't like to dance. Sometimes though. it takes one, though, to just turn down a contract offer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, listen, I think that we put uh, you got to believe to another level once again. Um, you know, uh, Frank Major saying, "I told folks you got to believe, you got to believe that uh, what's happened in '73 went to the World Series that year and barely lost. They took it to seven against Oakland uh, that year, uh, right? And that team only play. won about 83 games, right? I mean, they didn't, they barely got in. Um, and they made quite a run. So, so I just saw another thing. Diaz was just walking for the celebration again. He won't." He was not so yeah. He, he won't, he good. Won't don't jump. Right. Don't, yeah. Good. Don't, don't think about it. Just, yeah. just, good. Just raise your hands up in the air. Go like that's this. That's what he did. He, li he just kind of walked and clapped. Like, and He's like, yeah, he's, it's a shame because he's I, another guy who's like very emotional. I get it. Like, it, I get it. Yeah. Thanks. It sucks that he has to do that, but, you know, <laughs> caution. You never know. Um, you never know. Um, Let's just say that uh, we have. Of course, uh, right? yeah, we don't want this to be seventy-three or eighty-eight. I remember both, <laughs> and we don't want that. So. <laughs> it's definitely not eighty-eight. Well, eighty-eight was pretty much when all the magic kind of ran out. Like that mm -hmm. was like the that was it, it was for them. Like dry. that was that was the end. Um, 
I mean, obviously, like, the magic kind of fell out, like, right after they won in 86. Uh, but, right. like, that was officially, like, the that was it. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the end against the Dodgers in 88. Well, we'll see, though. It's, yeah, it's exciting, though. It, we, we keep going. The season lives yeah. on. Of course. And it, One thing I will that's say. That's big thing, too. Oh, boy. One thing I will say, you have some really, really good matchups coming up for this next round. Let's just say yeah. that. You have Detroit and Cleveland, who have some really good young pitching. Uh, of AL course. Central. You got a bunch of divisions, too. You got AL Central. You have yep. uh, the NL West. You have the NL East. Then you have Yankees yeah. Royals. That's different divisions. But overall, you have a lot of like division yeah. action going on. And then so. Mets Phillies is always fun. We already know it gets as heated as it gets. KC and, and New York. Let's not forget the, 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 last the infamous Mets Pine Tar game. The, playoffs. the infamous Pine Tar game. Let's not forget that, of yeah. course. Yeah. Of course. Um, so, you know, we'll see. And listen, the Royals, the Royals got some star power. So it's mm -hmm. not like they can't, uh, mm -hmm. they can't chest up to a Yankees team because the Yankees are they, top they need heavy. Some, they need more than we'll Bobby see. Witt to uh, <laughs> step up. Listen, the, the Yankees have a layover too. So, you know, it might mm -hmm. be the reason why they lose. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Um, but right now you have, um, you know, quite the path. And then, of course, uh, Sandy, the newest, uh, I guess this is like the new newest era of, Red Sox Yankees now mm -hmm. San Diego it's, versus it's, LA uh, like that's yeah. the new like the modern um you know it's just like like two one team that's just like been kind of inferior for a while but up and coming and then you have the other team uh that it just spends all this money and gets every single goddamn player known to man so that's Yankees Red Sox pretty much the same thing I'm curious to see what Yamamoto is going to do because I know yeah. he started we'll one of those first two games obviously we try there, to be up in the big there deal was there was a story about Yamamoto about him not coming up in big games in Japan, uh, oh, coming up in them. So I, I don't know. Okay. There was a story. I mean, obviously, different. I and mean, again, that's like just mm -hmm. narratives yeah, and different stuff. Different environment, but it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, it's uh, I'm looking at the MLB website as of right now and seeing Pete just scream at the top of his lungs in that in a picture. <laughs> Uh, which is just, I mean, it is great to see. It really is. Yeah, he he's, got, been, he's been downing he got quite his a moment. few beverages. So, yeah. And I, and hopefully he's able to, to sleep it off tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and um, Sebi doesn't have to drink the water. You know, they were making the jokes when and the Braves just, everyone drink their yeah. water. You don't got to drink water tonight. Nobody you eat any undercooked chicken. No. no. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy it. You, um, just, you guys earned it. I mean, jeez. Yeah, and also a another storyline. Um, Brandon Nemo's grandmother passed away mm -hmm. before the game, oh. and no, and no one besides Nemo knew. So, mm. I mean, credit. I mean, he got the huge hit later than I think. So, definitely, yeah. um, condolences to Brandon and his family. But, um, just yeah. you know, if you feel for yeah, him, rest in peace to he's, Grandma he's Nemo. Uh, everybody, um, give us your condolences as well. Um, you know, we already know Brandon Nemo is a very likable guy. Uh, so, you know, we know that a lot of things, uh, he's always a positive guy. So when you see him kind of, um, you know, compose himself a little bit, uh, you know, thinking and about something like that, we I can mean, get playoff McNeil. He, he's like right around the corner. Maybe. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, and Ranger we, Central, we, a guy Python, one of it. our uh, former guests on here, uh, saying nice. he's never ripped on Pete. I haven't uh, either. Never. I've never said anything bad about no, Pete still, ever before. None fat, of us have. No, uh, there fat, is no video fat. evidence, no, even though there is a video evidence of us you know, like doing it. Like literally you know, 24 again, hours ago. Hours ago. <laughs> and again, yeah. Yep. Game for War saying, respect to Carson for reading a critical. Listen, I, I understand frustrations of all Mets fans, you know, better than almost anybody. I mean, listen, I... If if you have some criticism that we give out, we give out criticism. You got some criticism for us. Um, as long as you're, you know, being respectful, it's criticism. There's a difference between criticism and hate. So I'm not, you know, someone. I mean, we've had Braves fans come in here and antagonize mm -hmm. us, and we'd be like, "Hey, listen, you know, you guys have a good team. You got a good squad. Yeah. You earn the you earn the win. You know, like there's nothing really we can say. It's only really the gateway that we have." Uh, to say things and you know that's how it is and sometimes they make us eat crow sometimes we uh just go on and uh continue some kind of uh you know trolling or something um it's all rea it is all reactionary at the end of the day you know it's it's how we're feeling at the current moment 
And it's a roller coaster being a Mets fan. That's how it is. It always will be. Uh, it will never be easy. No matter who buys the team, no matter how you change your jersey, no matter how, uh, you know, I forget how it is. You get the, the different uniform. Um, yeah, you can change the, the GM, change the coach, change the jersey, change, change the culture. The team. It don't matter. It doesn't matter what happened. Um, Reese Hoskins just said that it is nothing but disappointment right now after uh, Yes, losing. game four. I, I would. I, I got I got one. I'll, I'll wear it. I'll do it. Definitely. Yeah. I would love yeah, to. Sure. That's, that, that's, that's, that's the thing we were saying before game. Is that we're like so happy he did that. Like we that's yeah, what that's exactly. I think like we wanted to see that. So <laughs> yeah, I we wanted to does. see it. We've been waiting for him to do yeah. it. We've been waiting like, all year for him to come up with the, the Chris, big like, hit. You know, that's that's kind of the thing too. Is like sometimes with Chris, at least for me, it has to do with expectations. So like if yeah. it was a bum who was leaving a bunch of guys on base, I'm like, okay, he's a bum. I don't expect much. But when yeah. Alonzo's thing is like bringing in runners, yeah, like that's where I, my frustration comes from. When a run producer isn't producing runs, you're going to get fair criticism. That's just how it is. Yeah. You know, like um, Christopher coming in asking us, uh, would y'all stream on Twitch? I mean, we don't got any titties. I, uh, dude, how many things do I have to blank out for this yeah. goddamn episode? For fuck's sake. Okay. Um, but like that's mostly at the on. dark, folks. This yeah, is this uh, is going to Twitch to be messy. Y'all are killing the me. Dark, and y'all got to pay um, for that. I mean, we are not just going to be doing that for free. Yeah. All right. Jesus. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, you know, we you kind of have to build up a little bit of a following over there. We don't have a Twitch for Mets yeah. Weekly. Um, you know, I, I think that if we go through another uh, situation where the MLB season gets canceled, like in 2020, maybe we'll make a Twitch and be like making simulations or something. Yeah, and Andrew will um, be the show on the just to like uh, waste time Twitch or whatever. Account. Exactly. Kind of like how uh, S and Y did like a whole thing mm -hmm. with like a Mets simulation or whatever, and they had Gary Keith and Ron oh, announce a few so of those stupid. games. That was so funny. like you know. It was so dumb, but it's like you know to keep people occupied because there's only so many times you can do that. Um, I mean, it's All it's. Right. We'll see what happens. I think yeah. that you we'll know throw the, in the consideration the, box. Definitely. Um, yeah. It's an off season discussion, obviously. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah. Obviously, we got some uh, ideas for the off season coming through. Um, we have a fellow Raiders fan coming and saying uh, justice for Churio. Listen, I, I think uh, Raiders, I okay. some of my some of my fellow Raiders fans have been trolling me a little bit. You know, like you know. Uh, the way that they do knowing i'm a mets fan um but listen i i you know a win is a win you know i don't know what to tell you um but let's just say um do they even have sports bloggers on twitch i don't even know if they do i don't watch twitch. i have no clue yeah um i think I know if I, they do they'd um, probably have like some kind w of new york beat writer to ruin it for twitch everybody at some right point for one of their shows i forget which one I mean, I guess a little bit. Yeah, yeah Twitch. Right, so yep. I think we've hit that quota. Frank's about to pull Yeah, we definitely have. Uh, oh, no, way, way past my best yeah, time. definitely some extra, uh, you know, talk for you guys, uh, mainly because we're just finishing it off here, uh, filling some of the time that I thought we would do with Collins. But again, like we said, Everybody, uh, there was there was two other people that had a different uh, idea uh, to ruin it for everybody. So we had two good ones though, and we appreciate those. Yes, and, those guys. But yeah. we've Absolutely. Had good ones past, but we've had bad ones too. Yeah, uh, we had uh, two good ones come in here, uh, be respectful, and actually, you know, want to talk. And uh, then there's some that just wanted to ruin it for us. So um, it's whatever. Um, I know I apologize to anybody else who wanted to get any comments in, um, but other than that, uh, we're going to end it off here, and uh, we're going to rest up for the next series, which will be the National League Division Series. Um, and uh, we will be facing off against our division rival, the Philadelphia Phillies. We'll see what happens there. Of course, we will have the pregame show here on Saturday, a little bit earlier in the day, which will most likely be like 2.30 since it starts at 4. And uh, we'll have, of course, our notes going in. Uh, but other than that, I will give you guys your final uh, 
thoughts um incredible win i mean i don't know what else to say but uh andrew i'll go to you what do you got in that big fat head of yours well i'm not on the jalen brunson level of fat head but i'll take it from here uh just another chapter in this miracle season that is and the wild ride continues bring on the phillies and uh Again, you're you're not gonna have hair by the time you know these if these games keep going the way you are, you're already balding half, you know. Listen, I've like accepted Pluto. it. You know, like Pluto, I've already you know, accepted so. it. Again. But again, let's go Mets. Um Weekend in Philly. I can't, I can't think of anything better. All right. Uh Game for War coming in saying, Don't forget to like the video. We agree. I agree on that. You should do that for those of you who have not yet it really helps us out and the Frank, people I'll on twitter should go to youtube and like the video as well that would help out great yeah that'd be awesome <laughs> i mean for me I, I i'm just very happy that alonzo proved me wrong because this stream could have been it, it was like it could have went the other way so easily as far as just absolute just destruction and just screaming and going crazy in a bad way like it was this close to going that way i had the whole speech written out I had to rip up the paper. I mean, so he, he turned it around, and I just hope that this team could really get in the groove. No more stressful elimination games, at least for a little bit. We got to relax. I don't want to get too many gray hairs. I'm trying to keep the aging process as slow as possible. Uh, they push through a lot, so uh, we just want to have some fun as we go to Philly. Did you write that speech, uh, like, with the quill or whatever? The, the, the quill. Or yeah, of visit, course. The, the feather? Okay. Yeah, feather and quill. There you go. I had my uh, stone with me. I was I was etching in it. Stone. This wow. Yeah, you can write in hieroglyphics. That's bro, so I had the cool, tablet man. Out. Had the had the big ass black uh, big ass what is it called? Stone tablets. All nothing. right, but uh, as for me, uh, I mean, what a ride! Again, like Andrew said, I am definitely going to continue to lose my hair. Um, and to be honest, being the uh, younger. The youngest co-host out of the three of us and me losing my hair. I mean, it's, it is it is kind of a funny um, thing. Um, but you know what? The genetics got me. I don't know what to say. Um, but I've accepted it that it's going to happen. And, um, you know, yeah, you know what? Fuck you. All right? For our audio listeners, he is bragging about how he has a full head of hair. You know what? Screw you. All right? Some of us are just not that lucky. Anyways. Not built like this. For those of you in here who are watching, for those of you watching on Twitter, for those of you who were watching on YouTube, for those of you who are watching on Playback, let us know um, what you think of the wins in the comment section below. I, I, I don't usually call to the comment section or anything because, you know, these are live shows and you guys live chat, but, you know, it's a special occasion. We've got ourselves a... Um, Nice win in Milwaukee against a team that uh, absolutely destroyed us the entire year. Uh, but other than that, a uh, huge win onto the NLDS that we go. Make sure to follow everybody else individually. The links are in the description. Follow us on TikTok and on X for more content going forward. Um, I mean, what a win. What a win. That's all I got to say. And, of course, to those of you in here... Uh, make sure to tune in for our pregame for game one of the National League Division Series pregame coverage and, of course, the postgame coverage for the podcast. Other than that, we will see you guys next time. Let's go, Mets. What a win today. Enjoy the day off.